lesson on transformations. Um, this particular type of transformation we're going to look at today are rotations. Uh, so what you're asked to first of all do is draw arrows on these diagrams of celebrities on segways uh, to indicate the rotation of the following wheels in an anti-clockwise direction, just to get you into the hang of the difference between clockwise and anti-clockwise. So I want you to draw um, an arrow around the segways wheels but showing an anti-clockwise direction. So can you do that for me now? And then check to see if you have the same result as what's happening. So anti-clockwise direction on the first one, different to either. I think going that way. The other direction, of course, is clockwise. So more. Next one, hopefully, went this way. There we go. So anti-clockwise direction. So you need to be familiar with the word anti-clockwise and clockwise in this particular unit. So make sure that you're familiar with that kind of stuff. Radio. So whenever we talk about rotation in this unit, we're referring to positive rotation as opposed to negative rotation. So if it's a positive rotation, it's in an anti-clockwise direction, like the direction indicated on the board. Therefore, rotation in an anti-clockwise, in a clockwise direction would be considered as a negative rotation. So if rotation in a positive direction is uh, anti-clockwise, then rotation in um, a clockwise direction would be the opposite, it would be a negative rotation. Um, so we'll need to just recap a little bit. Um, okay, so let's recap. On a coordinate plane, like the one to the right, what do we mean by the origin. So what is the origin? Try to think if you can remember. Right, the origin is this little point right here. What are the coordinates of the origin? So it's zero, zero. That's what the origin is. So it's the point zero, zero, which is this little point right here in the center. Um, so a rotation, talking about rotation, turning things around. Um, a rotation in this unit is when a point, P, X of Y, so basically a coordinate on the original object, is rotated to an angle of theta. Unless the equation states otherwise, assume the center of rotation is the origin. What is the origin again? The origin is zero, zero. So assume that the center of so unless the question states otherwise, assume the center of rotation is at the origin. You're probably wondering, what am I talking about this center of rotation? Um, that is, sorry, the origin is zero, zero. The center of rotation, what is it? The center of rotation is like the center of a wheel. So kind of like the middle center where things rotate around. Or a door hinge, like this kind of thing. So a door will kind of rotate around that hinge when you open and close it. Um, so the wheel will rotate around the center of the wheel. We tend to label the center of rotation with O. So see how you can sort of see this one has been labeled with O. That's what we call the center of rotation. So let's try applying this. So as you can see in this little diagram, by the way, we've got P, the original point here. And if you rotate it anti-clockwise in a direction through theta, it will become the point will be the image. So it is the image point. And this one is the, the object. Remember I do the object in red. I tend to anyway. I tend to do the image. Right, so that's what happens when you do a new rotation. Let's try applying some of this. So when a point P and the original object is rotated around O. What is O again? It is the center of rotation. So it could be the origin, if, unless it states otherwise. It might say the center of rotation is at point 1, 5. So it might say the center of rotation is at the coordinate negative 1, 2. So when a point is rotated around O, which is the center of rotation, the point and its image, P dash, are the same distance, they're equidistant from the center of rotation. So for example, let's see, where's our center of rotation on this diagram here? Here it is. Note of that. 
enter rotation at O. So the center of rotation is at O, this little point here. So they're saying a point T on the object. So let's see, where's a point on the object? Let's look at A maybe. So here's the object here. There's a point A. Um, when it's rotated around the um, <laughs> center of rotation, then its image point, which is A dash, let's write all that, A dash is over here. So A became A dash. And notice it's equidistant. So equal distance. From A to O, and from A dash to O. So that's important. It's this particular rotation, what kind of rotation has happened here? This has been a 90 degree rotation in which direction? Clockwise or anti clockwise? So this is a 90 degree rotation in which direction? A clockwise or anti clockwise? If you're going sort of like this, in an anti clockwise direction. So those two yellow lines are meant to be equal distances. And are they equal distances? Have a count. The vertical line is 1, 2, 3, 4 squares. And the horizontal line is 1, 2, 3, 4 squares. Um, so we're talking about the yellow line and the red line. Uh, they're equal distances. So that's what they mean, equal distance from O. So notice that. So we can write that. A and A dash are equal distance or equidistant from O. That's what we can observe here. So one thing that the lady in the diagram is pointing out, so we draw a circle arc centered at O to make sure that a point and its image are the same distance from O. What is she talking about when she's talking about these circle arcs? I'll just let you know. These are the circle arcs. Here's one here. So when we're doing rotation, these circle arcs can help us make sure that the point remains kind of away from O. Undo that. The same distance from O. So going from this one, from A, A to A dash, there's a little circle arc there. And here, going from E to E dash, here's a little circle arc. Going from B to B dash, here's a little circle arc. These circle arcs, notice that if you kind of connect them up, so connect A and A dash up, it creates kind of like a little um, arc length, doesn't it? It's almost like an arc length on a circle. So we call these kind of circle arcs, and they're used to help us to do a rotation. Doing these rotations can be quite tricky. So drawing in a circle arc can kind of help you keep it on track. Um, but we haven't tried doing that yet, so let's go do that. So here's an example. Um, so an example. Rotate each figure about O. What is O again? It is the center of rotation. I'm trying to remind you what it is. So rotate each figure about O through the angle indicated. So here it's saying 180 degrees, a full 180 degree turn, clockwise. We're not going anti-clockwise this time, we are going clockwise. So let's have a little look at that. Um, so doing rotations for me, I personally find them a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm going to try to go through this nice and carefully. Where is our center of rotation? That's right, it's at O. So we've got to rotate this whole thing, this whole little L shape. We have to rotate it 180 degrees in a clockwise direction. So I used to use little points, like maybe this little point, I'm going to color code it green, and I'll show you where it's co once it's done the 180 degree rotation, where would it be? So let's think about 180 degree rotation. I'm going to erase these circle marks afterwards, but I'm just going to show you the rotation. Try to rotate this 180 degrees, like that, clockwise direction, 
that would be going like that. So a little green point would end up here. So I'm just going to undo my circle arc drawing so it looks really fancy. Okay. I'm just going to put in a green point. So this little green point here on the bottom, so when you rotate it 180 degrees or around O, around the center of rotation, will end up there. So that's where the new green point on the image is going to be. So the object is drawn first, and now we're going to draw the image, and I'm going to do it by plotting the points first. And as I said, I'm going to use color code. I personally found this green one easy to do because it was really easy to see that that point rotated 180 degrees around the center of rotation. The next one I'm probably going to do is, let's see, I'll do that in that color. I'm going to do this one. Can't see it very well though on the grid line because it's changed that color. It's almost the same as a little. Okay, so if you rotated this 180 degrees around the blue, dark blue thing, it would kind of end up here, wouldn't it? But see with my circle arc, that's helping me to draw this other point. So I'm going to do undo my circle arc because it'll be look a bit messy when you have your final diagram drawn. You can keep some draws if you like, but just make sure you maybe use a light coloured pencil or something. Um, so it's going to, as I said, when this one rotates, it's going to end up over here. That's where that point's going to end up. Um, so now maybe let's try some of the other points. I personally found those two the easiest ones to do. Um, what can be a bit tricky is maybe the next one. So I'm going to do yellow one here. So I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees in a clockwise direction around this kind of little bow point. So kind of think, where is it going to end up? So if you kind of rotated it 180 degrees, it's just going to end up there, isn't it? Around the blue dot in the center. If you rotate it 180 degrees around the blue dot in the center, this one is going to end up here. Because notice that um, the, this yellow dot is equidistant from the blue dot as the original yellow dot. It's, so the same distance from the, um, the yellow dot is the same distance from the blue dot as is the other yellow dot, the same distance from the blue dot. Now what we need to do is maybe let's do another point. I think I might choose the orange color for this one. Let's do this one. So do a point here pretty easy. If I rotate this 180 degrees around the center of rotation, I end up over here. Easy to do. I'm going to undo my circle arc. I just don't like the look of them. And I'm going to draw it in. So it ended up being over here. So you can sort of see how the shape's forming. Really I might just do one more little point. So one more little point. Uh, what color can I use? Mauve, where is this one going to end up? It's a bit tricky for this one, so I drew my circle arc. You can kind of probably see that it's going to end up there, can't you? But still, let's do that by rotating it around the blue dot. And then you can draw a big circular arc. Circular arc, see, the circular arc is always equidistant. Every point on the circular arc is equidistant from the blue dot, center of rotation. And yeah, it's going to end up there. Um, circle arc. In. So that was here. And then we can just join it up. So I'm going to join it all up. And you can always check, like once you've kind of drawn it all up, does it kind of look like the other image, but just rotate it. So at least the image hasn't changed size, hasn't changed shape. It's just changed where it's located in space due to the rotation around the center of rotation. Um, so the center of rotation was that little blue dot in the center. You might want to make a note of that for future reference. Um, the center of rotation is here. Um, cool, so that was a little bit tricky to do. As I said, rotations are pretty fussy, so just go slowly and carefully. I do it one point at a time. And if it helps to color code them, now I would suggest doing that. What's our next one? Um, we've got a funny another weird L shape, and they want us to do 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So 
we're not going 180 degrees clockwise anymore, we're going 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Mm. Where's our center of rotation? That must have just been here. So we need to rotate each point around that. Find one. So I'm going to start with this point. So we're going 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Let's try our circle up. I want 90 degrees anti-clockwise. This is in 90 degrees anti-clockwise. It's going to land there. And then that's again. I'm doing my circle up. I'm just drawing the points. You can keep your circle up if you like. Just keep the drawing very faintly. It doesn't kind of mess around with the drawing. The drawing doesn't look weird as you go. By the way, you might want to make one of this. This is the image. And the other one deals with the object. Just so it looks like object. So back to here, so we've drawn one point already, that's fantastic. Now let's try drawing some more points. Um, next one I'm going to draw, so yeah, I'll just show since we do this one. That's pretty easy to do a 90 degree rotation for at first in time. So we're going 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So we need to, at all points, time, be kind of equidistant from the rotation as we're doing our 90 degree rotation. It's a bit different to doing the 180, isn't it? So we land there, don't we? When we do a 90 degree rotation, and my circle arc is always equal distance. Every point on the circle arc is equal, equal distance from your blue center of rotation. Okay, let's draw now. So the point is right here. Blue, another one. Blue, blue color. So, use a nice dark blue. Let's use our circle mark technique. Rotate it 90 degrees. Keep reminding yourself what you're doing. You're going 90 degrees anti clockwise. So, spin around 90 degrees anti clockwise. So it's going to end up here. There it is. And circle arc. 90 degrees anti clockwise. This lovely little shape. Point here. So let's put three points on there first. So we've got the third orange, we've got the, the second orange point, the second green point, and the second blue point. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit hard to sort of still see how the diagram would look. So you might want to do another point or two. So let's maybe do this one. This will probably help us to be able to draw the image diagram a bit more. We need to rotate this point 90 degrees anti clockwise around the country of origin. Where on earth is this going to end up? So let's see. I'm going to try to rotate it. Dodgy circle like I drew there. But, yep, it is going to end up there. So let's undo our circle arc. So remember, I'm only going 90 degrees and clockwise. So it is going to end up up here. That makes sense too, because like from the blue dot to the yellow dot on the object, it's four boxes. And from the blue dot to the yellow dot on the image, it's four boxes. So it's kind of like looking like it's working out okay. Uh, we probably need to do another point. And a purple one. This little one. Now let's rotate this one 90 degrees anti-clockwise. I wonder if you can guess where it's going to end up. Around the center of origin. So it's going to end up here. Just making a nice 90 degree angle there. This is feeling weird for you at first, doing these kind of rotations. Of this one. So that's where that point ended up. Now we need to connect them all up. So I'm from here to here. The line from here to here. See, the other orange dot is not part of the image, so it's part of the object. So just keep an eye on that. We just have to this one up. Just check, is it still the same diagram, same size, same shape? Yes, it is the same size and the same shape, which is great. Um, it's just been rotated 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. Probably should draw that to mix it up. So this one is the image. This one was the object. And our 
center of rotation is right there. Just to make some notes for ourselves in the future. I've got a heap of little things like going on down here, so let me get rid of those. So it's taking us a while to do this, but that's okay because it's a short lesson, so it's a little bit tricky. So interesting one, 90 degree, degrees clockwise this time, not anti-clockwise. Where's our centre of origin? It's actually one of the points. So the good thing about it is when the centre of origin is actually a point on the diagram, then when you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, the image is point is going to be in exactly the same spot. So that little point, that little vertex here that I've labelled in blue where the centre of origin is, sorry, the centre of rotation, not the centre of origin, centre of rotation, um, that this image point is going to be in the exact same spot and then this point is happening. Now let's do maybe the other two ways. This little point here, we need to rotate it 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. So 90 degrees in a clockwise direction, kind of like we're going to kind of form this house going on. So we can do that. Makes sense, 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. We're we going to come back to the line, we're going to do that very well. It should end up there. So 90 degrees in a clockwise direction, we're going to end up right here. I'm going to undo my arm. You can leave your arms on there, just draw them very faintly. So they don't look like they're part of the actual resulting diagram. Um, there we go. Nice. Um, and then yellow. So the yellow point here. So we need to we need to rotate this 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. There we go. We'll end up right there. 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. We'll end up right there. Let's undo our circular. There we go. There we go. So that's our image. So I've got our image. And we've got our object. So our image and our object done. And with our centre of rotation, just remind ourselves, because once we've drawn this, we see what's doing originally there. Our centre of rotation was right there. And that looks true, like it looks like if you did rotate that triangle 90 degrees in a clockwise direction, it would end up there. That's the centre of rotation. Example. Next example, the last example. Uh, state the vertex coordinates of the triangle. A, B, C. So that's easy enough. So they were just talking about the original, the original triangle A, B, C. A is A, B, C. One of those coordinates. We do that because we're not going to So the coordinates of point A, what is that? It is negative 2 and 4. Coordinates of point B, how the sense would they be? That's right, negative 1 and 4. Coordinates of point C, what would that be? That's right, you need two and one. Okay, so that's done. Now you're asked to rotate the triangle 90 degree clockwise about the origin. So about the origin, that means our centre of rotation is the origin. And where's the origin again? That's right, it's right here. So reminding you that the origin is zero. So we're just asked to rotate the triangle 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. So maybe let's start with those, yellow, start with the yellow, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees around the origin. So we need to kind of always be equidistant from the origin, where is it going to land? I'm just making sure I'm doing it right because my ball is slightly warped, so it's hard to sort of be where it should be. Um, okay, so it's in a little land. There, that's right, yeah, it's going to land there. And rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so it's marking that point. It's going to be over just here. That's a bit in the right spot, I hope it is. Yeah, okay, well, that's where it's meant to be. So 90 degrees in a clockwise direction, then yellow point A will create a dash. Now let's do B. Maybe B in the mode. Kind of color. So B, let's rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. 
probably guess where it's going to end up. That's where it's going to end up, right there. That's the clockwise, it's going to end up right there. Now C, and then 90 degrees over. C, let's rotate that 90 degrees clockwise. About the center of rotation. The center of rotation, remember, is in the center here. So rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. It will kind of end up. It's about there. Okay. So 90 degrees clockwise there. And let's undo that. Now just connect up those points. And just double check, does the diagram look the same? It's the same shape, it's the same size. It's just being rotated 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. And see, so because there's that from here. If you rotate 90 degrees, see it makes a 90 degree angle, if you're not sure of that. It's got a little 90 degree angle going on there. But I wouldn't use that picture in there because it messes things up a bit when you look back at it. So this one is the image. And this one is the object. And this one is the center of rotation. This is the origin. Um, this question is not quite finished. We have to start to do one extra little thing. You're asked to state the vertex coordinates of the image. The image is the purple one. So what are the coordinates, the vertex coordinates of the image? So A became A dash, that's the yellow one. A dash is the yellow one on the image. What is the coordinates of the yellow one on the image? Have a look. That's the first four two. B dash. Got that. B dash is the kind of purpley one. Right here. So B dash would be four slash one. One. C dash, what would that one be? That would be one comma two. And thank you, that's the point of rotation. Um, sometimes uh, in Ed Excel exams, we would get allowed to have tracing paper to sort of work out, kind of like trace the image and try rotating it. Um, but tracing paper, I personally prefer this method than using tracing paper. So we'll kind of try to stick with this method. Okay, thank you.